Hi everyone, it's Dixon here and today I'm going to be showing you how the brand new MacBook Air M1 performs handling 4K video editing, also including Fusion Composition using DaVinci Resolve 17.1. So this has been optimized for the M1 chip. So let's take a look in my video and see how it performs. So the first thing I'm going to do is load up DaVinci Resolve 17.1. This is the public beta of DaVinci and this is designed specifically to be optimized with the M1 chip. So we expect better performance. Um, so I'm just gonna dive straight in and load an untitled project. And then I just want to make sure you can see the setup I have. It is for 4K content at the very top. So the timeline format is 4K and I'm going to switch that to be 30 FPS to match my video. And then video monitoring, of course we equally want to switch that to the 4K at 30 FPS, just so that you get a sense of how it handles it on the MacBook. So I'm going to click on save, and now of course we need to add in the 4K content. So I'm just gonna drag and drop a load of files which I used in one of my other videos for the dual monitor setup. And now I'm just going to come over to edit, and let's start off with my intro video. So I'm gonna drag that into the timeline, and I'll just mute this. And what you can see is as I click on play, it goes through and plays the content, no issues whatsoever. Everything's ready to go without any hiccup. And scrubbing is silky smooth. So as I click and drag across the timeline, you'll see there's absolutely no latency whatsoever. And bearing in mind, I have this output to two dual monitors, which you can actually see in this mini preview on the screen. Let's add another part of the video. So this is where I actually show how to set up your dual monitors. So I'll just drag it over here just so that you can see it quickly. And again, I'll press play and you'll see it transition straight through. No issues whatsoever. Again, silky smooth and scrubbing remains smooth as I click and drag across that timeline. So when it comes to the 4K part and editing, I found this to have absolutely no issues. Please remember I do have the 16 gigabyte model with eight core GPU. So I was expecting this to be better than what I've seen on many YouTube videos where they look at the base model. If like me, it might be that you're interested then in, well, how does it handle fusion? So slightly more heavy requirements on the CPU and the GPU. So I want to start off by adding in my subscribe fusion clip, which is six seconds. So I'm going to add a new fusion composition. I'm going to set this to be six seconds and it's at 30 FPS and I'll drag that out into my timeline in the beginning. And what I'll do now is just quickly head over to the Fusion tab and I'm going to import my Fusion settings. So I've got this subscribe setting saved, ready to go and I'll just drag this out to media out. You'll notice that the graphics have been shrunk so I'm just going to quickly go ahead and change the size of the graphic. So now I've edited the graphics, I'm just gonna click play and show you how that looks in the Fusion tab. So nice and smooth, no issues. And this is just a six second clip. And I'm now going to head back over to my timeline under edit. And you'll see that it's now got that render bar across the top in red. So you'll get to see how long it takes to render this in my timeline. So you'll see that blue bar starting to fill up. And remember this is a six second Fusion clip which I wouldn't say is massively labor intensive, just consisting of a couple of graphics and a few shapes and a bit of text. And nearly there. And now that's ready to go. So if I just click on play, you'll see that now pops up on screen, nice and smooth. And once more. So that's one example. You may also be interested in using slightly more labor intensive fusion transitions as an example. So I'm going to head over to this uh, glass down effect. You can see it gets a little bit choppy when I preview here. So I'm going to drag that into my timeline just over here. Um, and I quickly just need to change the settings to enable the caching of the transitions. So I'll click save and we'll get the red bar across at the top. Just move this a bit further away. And now you get a sense of how long it takes to actually render something like this cool glass transition. 
do it just a little bit longer and then we're ready to go and away we go so i'll just go from around here and you'll see that lovely glass transition now plays silky smooth on screen so yes it takes a little while to get that rendered on the timeline but now everything runs perfectly without any frame rate dropping now it's all been cached on my laptop so something to bear in mind of course again i've got the 16 gig 8 core gpu so if you're starting to cache many fusion transitions or other graphics on your timeline you may expect to see some latency so one thing to note of course is that i've decided to cache the rendering for this fusion effect but if you actually want to see the performance without the caching on the timeline, I'll quickly show you, so I'll remove it. I'm going to change the settings so that I do not cache the transition. And then I'm gonna go once again and come down to this glass effect. And I'm going to drag and drop on the timeline here and go ahead and play. And you'll see it is incredibly choppy and the frame rate drops massively. So it's around 11 frames per second, down to around nine at times as well. So on the fly, these laptops will struggle even with the eight core GPU and 16 gig of RAM. And if I just quickly show you the settings when I come up to the top and go to preferences, looking at the memory and GPU, you can see I've got my 16 gig of memory and it limits the memory usage to 12 gig and Fusion memory cache to eight gigs. So again, if you have more than that in your timeline, something far more intensive, you are going to experience issues. So to give you a sense of how long it takes to render the actual project and output the video itself, I'm gonna head over to the deliver section and you can see I've got custom settings saved. So the resolution again is at 4K Ultra HD and frame rate of 30 FPS. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add to render queue. And now I'm going to click on render all. And what you'll see on the timeline is it does take much longer when you're rendering through the fusion compositions as you would expect. And again, we'll see it uh, a bit slower when we're actually over this glass transition. And then what you will see is it speeds up massively just after it gets past that. So any second now, it gets on the timeline and it gets through much quicker as you would expect to see. So you don't need to watch all of this. I'm going to edit the video obviously to show you how long it takes. So the timer will be in the top right corner. So we'll be back in a second. And there we go. So you can see that that took a total of three minutes and eight seconds, as you can see in the top right. And to give you a sense of that in comparison to the timeline on the video. So this video is one minute and 57 seconds just over that so i'm very impressed with how long it takes to render so again just bear in mind i think if you do have lots of fusion compositions and other graphics it will take noticeably longer but again very impressed with how long that's taken so we've just had a proper in-depth look at how DaVinci Resolve 17.1 performs with raw 4K video editing. And as you've seen, it behaves extremely well. It performs fantastically without any issues when we're scrubbing along the timeline, editing the clips or anything like that. When it comes to the fusion composition aspects, um, it's fine once you've actually rendered and cached it on your timeline. So for example, remembering the glass transition and my little subscribe fusion composition. But sometimes if you do just leave it to render on demand, just purely against the CPU and GPU, you will come across some hurdles, such as with that glass transition shown earlier in the video. So in terms of recommendations, I'm happy with this purchase because for me personally, I'm not going to be using much fusion or any other crazy effects in my videos. I'm going to be doing simple transitions or clipping the video content. And as you can see with the 4K video, it has absolutely no issues. So I'm incredibly impressed. I hope that you found this insightful. And please, if you've got any questions, please leave those in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer. I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.